Listed agricultural firm Agri Nurture is buying a majority stake in IT company Pay8 to digitally and financially empower its partner farmers. That's 378 million pesos of an investment for 51% of Pay8. Joining us this morning, the man of the hour, Tony Chu. Hi, Tony. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Okay, so Pay8 is supposed to create a network of payment centers under the Buy It Express brand, backed up by VSAT technology. A VSAT, of course, is essentially, we know, as a terminal that can be used to send and receive payments. How does this work? And how do you link this up with your affiliate banks, including BRB Digibank? Well, the synergy here is BRB Digital Bank has the EMI license. Mm -hmm. And AgriNurture has the perfect ecosystem. So with this uh, pay uh, e-wallet where the Visa technology can allow access to data with, uh, to internet without passing, without uh, utilizing the, the data and instead using the satellite. Plus, they have uh, a working agreement with Philpos, mm -hmm. which will allow us to have a physical presence in a strategic geographic locations. Mm -hmm. So it will it enable us to serve the farmers better online and offline. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the farmer experience, how does this work? They can borrow money from the system and pay through yes. the system as well? Yes. Uh, so we, we will close the loop. Remember, we keep on discussing uh, this opportunity to uh, solve the problem by digitalizing the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. So the, the closing the loop uh, is uh, by way of issuing a, a, an instrument. We will call it agriculture, where we will take out the temptation of farmers from using the money for something else. And the voucher will only be uh, the, uh, an instrument that is accepted within our ecosystem with, with our online merchants. Mm -hmm. So after the harvest, they deliver the produce, the loan is settled, and the profit is credited to their e-wallet, in which they can utilize the money for something else, or if they need to withdraw the, the profit, they can use it through all the ATM nationwide. Mm -hmm. Tony, the Agri voucher that you're talking about, is this the same as the Agri token? Agri token is the company. Oh, so okay. It's the ecosystem. Agri voucher is the instrument. Okay. Now, there are around 10 million farmers in the Philippines. How many are you looking to onboard your system? So, the total database as of 2016 is about 13.5 million farmers and fisher folks. Majority are farmers, and uh, we will see. Uh, the data actually being updated uh, as if we embark on this major undertaking. Mm -hmm. It will go through phases in partnership with government agencies and uh, we will target uh, the phase one in Mindanao, then phase two, uh, Luzon and Mindanao, and then phase three nationwide. So I would say the uh, first phase we would probably cover at least uh, two to three million uh, Filipino farmers. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, uh, we see a lot of farmers still struggling economically to make ends meet. Oftentimes, they tend to mortgage their produce to loan sharks for access to cash. What measurable impact are you expecting to get out of this recent acquisition and how it builds your ecosystem for the farmers? The problem with the agri sector is uh, lack of access to microfinance because the real issue is there is very low uh, credit rating in terms of uh, the farming sector, plus uh, there is the lack of a, a uh, an efficient database. So the banks will be hesitant to lend to the agri-agri sector despite the law mandating 25% of the loan portfolio being allocated for agri-agri. So this will actually um, help to come up with a credit scoring system, cluster them, uh, close the loop, so we reduce the risk, and in fact, we will guarantee the purchase of the, their product at uh, above market price and provide, it, provide them with the much needed input so they will have the inputs to produce the output. Uh, the interest rate will also be lowered. So instead of borrowing from traditional loan charts at 5-6 uh, rate, which is 20%, uh, our rates will be within a reasonable 
uh, margin uh, from from the traditional banking like bank lending rates. Mm -hmm. And Tony, are you not worried about defaults? What NPLs are you looking at? So there are a lot of risk mitigation measures. Mm -hmm. The criteria, the, the challenge here is how do we reduce the risk? So other than clustering uh, the farmers into uh, big groups, organized cooperatives, or uh, clustered lending, so we have economies of scale, we will also be uh, securing certain types of insurance. Mm -hmm. to mitigate the potential risk as Philippines is exposed to all kinds of weather disturbance every year. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be an individual farmer making this transaction from you guys. It's going to be by groups, clustered, cooperatives. We have to cluster uh, farmers together in order to mm -hmm. achieve the basic economies of scale. Otherwise, it will not be feasible for us to serve one farmer with one hectare in a remote island. It will be logistically not possible also to bring their produce to, to the hub. Mm -hmm. So we will start with the bigger islands and then phase two the, the next year and then last will be the will be nationwide. Mm -hmm. But even on the smallest uh, islands it has to it has to have a certain economies of scale. At least we have to cluster fifty to hundred hectares uh, in order to to be logistically feasible. Mm -hmm. Tony, where do you put recession on your forecasts for the next 6 to 12 months ahead? Especially, I know that China, which is a big market for you, uh, in fact, uh, your foreign operations ordinarily usually contribute around 60, 50, 60 percent of revenues. China has gone ahead and bounced back already. So how do you see the recession playing out when you look at the future? Actually, uh, agriculture and uh, food is the pandemic resilient industry. So this is a time where everything else is not important. Uh, we just have to live and survive. So other than uh, being healthy, everybody has to have food. So we actually experience a huge uh, surge in the demand of our basic product is Q2. Um, after the lockdown, the first few weeks was chaos, but after that, um, it seems that uh, the demand actually uh, increased significantly. So, recession is given. I guess uh, for 2020, it's a, it's, it's a year that everybody would just write it off. Um, but for the agri sector, for the food industry, I think this is a year where we will be a lot busier and uh, we, will we will be experiencing uh, a very huge growth out of this uh, opportunity from the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Tony, I know that um, as of the first quarter of this year, AgriNurture still has a liability of about 1.6 billion pesos. But given this very low rate environment, giving a lot of companies a lot of elbow room with cash, um, financing might be cheap and easy. What are your plans? Are you looking to take out more loans to deploy and invest more, perhaps in technology, automation, robotics, or or pay out those loans? Uh, well, right now we have uh, received a lot of offers from overseas, uh, potentially raising some uh, cheaper long-term money. Um, but priority is to deploy this this money for working capital to grow the the top line and bottom line. Capex is uh, long-term. Capex will be uh, will be scaled down. Uh, we will uh, we will try to budget our capex requirements from the recurring 